Hi, I'm Dr. Montgomery, and in this video, we'll be going through a problem um, that, again, I've uh, given on past exams uh, in the past, and you might see something like it on homework or upcoming exam, just to give you an idea of something you might uh, see as we're working through various uh, concepts. So this particular problem is going to highlight uh, the concept we've talked about as, the, as far as the node voltage method, or other texts might call it the uh, nodal analysis of, of circuit analysis. So here you see um, a circuit diagram that I've already laid out. I encourage you to maybe pause the video and uh, go ahead and copy that down in your notes if you have not already. Um, we have various different elements in here, current sources, uh, voltage sources, resistors, and a special note is a dependent voltage source indicated right here. So be sure you note that as well as mark these various uh, variables that I've already outlined as far as I1, IX, I2. And then I've already gone ahead and uh, predefined the node voltages that we're going to try to find, uh, noting V1 here, V2 in the middle, and V3 to this side over here. Again, also note that I've already indicated a reference, so that'll kind of sh just immediately get us started. So go ahead and do that, copy this down, and then we're going to work through these five different parts of the problem in uh, coming up with the uh, final solution overall. Okay, so now that you've had this uh, copied down, you know, a lot of students, you know, I, I think get a little bit confused. They see a big problem, lots of various elements, uh, often wonder, where do I start? Where do I begin? And for me, I just recommend, you know, trying to find, like, the most easiest approach to get uh, some, some variable. You know, just because a problem might tell you to find A, B, C, D, E, doesn't mean you have to necessarily find them in that order. I would just look at the specific schematic that you have and try to see, are there any obvious solutions to any one of these? And get started from there and then go on in, in uh, figuring out everything else. So of particular note in this case you see that my node voltage V1 here is directly tied to a voltage source, an independent voltage source specifically, which is then tied to our reference point. Okay, So that's a very easy um, one to start with in this case because as we've talked about, anytime you have a node voltage connected to an independent source, uh, that voltage has to be the same value as that source. And then it's just a matter of asking yourself, well, what uh, should that be a positive or a negative voltage? And in this case, we look at the polarity of that independent source and we see that because the negative terminal of that source is tied to my node voltage, that would should be a negative 18 volts in this case. So that we can just immediately copy down as the solution to part A, simply because it's tied to that source. Now for node voltages V2 and V3, you know that this is where we can obviously see it's going to be a little bit more in depth. Um, but again, something we can immediately point out as we've talked about in doing the node voltage analysis is whenever you have a voltage source that is simply that is sitting between two node voltages, we can use the concept of the super node, right? Um, so we kind of indicated that by drawing a little box around that source. And again, you can use the super node analysis either for independent sources or for a dependent source such as we have here. And what that allows us to do is now just write a single equation that's going to describe these two node voltages V2 and V3 rather than writing, having to write two separate equations and then combine them as, as such. Okay, so now that we have that super node defined, as we've talked about, we can write an equation now to express what the uh, various currents would be traveling into and out, uh, out of each one of these branches. So if we looked here first uh, through this branch here, we could start by saying it would be V2 minus V1, because that's the ending voltage on this side of both of these elements. That would be a starting point. Let's say V2 minus V1. Um, but then I need to take into account that I have an independent voltage source sitting here. So that would have to somehow either add into or subtract off from this difference between those two node voltages. And to figure that, again, we have to pay attention to the polarity of that source. And so I see that because the negative terminal here is tied to the node voltage that I'm writing this equation from, then I should actually add that voltage, so that'd be plus six volts into that expression. And so that total voltage there is what's going to drop across this two ohm resistor right here. So again, just using ohms law, we divide by two. That tells us now the current traveling through this branch here. Okay, so that's the first just uh, part of our equation. So adding to this, let's look at what would be the current uh, traveling down this branch. So here I just have, uh, I only have a single resistor between that node voltage and my reference. So this one should be easy, should just be V2 plus V2 over that uh, resistor, two ohms, put ohms here, 
Okay. Um, again, because we've done the super node, uh, we don't, we're sort of like taking, imagine that we're taking out that dependent source right there, and so we're going to continue writing our equation, uh, but from the basis of V3, okay? So again, I look, I can see another branch here with a single resistor where I have a node voltage of V3. That's the voltage going to be dropped across that two ohm resistor. So I can add this into my equation. So we'll see plus V3 over two ohms, all right? Um, and then the final branch that we're looking at is what's the current uh, traveling uh, down from V3 down this branch through to back to my reference, okay? And so you see here I have a current source, so of course that, that's defining what my current value is overall. But I note that because my the 4 amp current is uh, directed inwards, but we're always writing node voltage expressions in terms of the current flowing out, I need to subtract that 4 amps, so this will be minus 4 amps. And again, all of those then have to sum to zero based on what we know about uh, doing the node voltage analysis, okay? Um, let's see, maybe the second equation we could go ahead and do right now is to what would be the equation relating what V2 and V3 are. So that would be based on what, what's happening in the super node. So if we say we're gonna do a super node equation here. Okay, so again, the super node equation is just basically asking ourselves how are V2 and V3 related to, through this uh, dependent source. And so here I could just say that uh, V2 V2 minus V3 would have to be equal to 2IX, okay? Because again, I'm just looking at, you know, I'm sort of looking at the polarity of this the source, what, if, whether it's a de dependent source or independent source. I see that the positive terminal is connected to the V2, so that's why I'm saying V2 minus V3 um, is equal to the quantity of that independent source is 2 times IX, okay? So that's where my 2IX is coming from right here. Um, and then the final thing we would just need to note is how do we know what IX is? Because that's an unknown and we need to keep everything reduced so we have a minimum amount of unknowns in our equations. So IX, again, indicated here in this uh, problem as being the current that's traveling up through this 2 ohm resistor. So here we could say that IX is going to be equal to uh, minus V2 over this two ohm resistor. And again, I'm indicating it as a negative quantity because specifically the direction of IX that's defined for us in order to find that is, is pointed in the upward direction. But this value V2 over two would actually be the current defined as going in the opposite direction. So we need to put that negative sign to compensate that difference there. Um, okay, so these uh, are, should be the equations that we need to solve. So go ahead and now pause the video actually to uh, see if you can work through that and simplify to get the final solutions and then we'll check our answers after that. Okay, so if you've managed to make your way through um, doing some fairly basic just uh, substitution equation manipulation uh, with the, those three equations that we had to come down to our two really unknowns that we were trying to get to, which was uh, for part B and C, V2 and V3, hopefully you got the solutions of uh, negative four volts and negative eight volts for each of those respective uh, node voltages. Okay, so now the final part of the problem asks us what is the what are these two currents I1 and I2 here specifically. So, so following the same uh, discussion we just had about uh, how to define IX, of course I1 would simply be defined uh, as again paying to paying attention to the uh, node voltage that is tied to, which is V1 in this case, uh, V1 over the value of that resistor, nine ohms. And again, I should indicate this as a negative quantity, specifically because of the fact that uh, the direction of this current is in opposition to how that node voltage V1 is defined. So I could now simply substitute, uh, I know what V1 is already, negative 18 volts, plug that in here. Um, of course, should just end up with the value of two amps for this one. And then similarly for I2, which is the current indicated as traveling through this branch with that two ohm resistor. Uh, would be, now I'm looking at the node voltage V3. So V3 over two ohms. And again, same thing, I, that should be a negative quantity. Um, substituting in what I already have for V3 right here would give me a value of four uh, amps, right? Give it, yes. So this now tells us, can gives us, gives us all the solutions here. Let's plug in this two amps here, four amps there. 
Um, and that this now basically defines for us all the various voltages and even some of the cr branch currents that we have flowing in the circuit and gives us to, give, gets us to the solution that we were looking for. So hopefully that makes a little sense and uh, helps clarify a few things. I encourage you to always you know, spend time practicing on these types of problems. Um, you never know, very, there's maybe a hundred various uh, interpretations of how you might see a problem like this, uh, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of at least how to approach the problem and uh, work towards a solution. Thank you very much.